Alright everyone, I wanted to make a quick video just showing how to set up our keyboards to use them as MIDI controllers uh, to control main stage and other software instruments um, for live use during our worship services and other events. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go piece by piece through how to set all this stuff up so that you should have everything you need. The first thing that I'll mention is just making sure your computers and interfaces are set in safe places. You don't want to put your computer somewhere that it's going to fall and break. Um, so I'm just in our green room here. I've got it on a table. Um, try to find something stable like a rack unit or something that you can set your computer on so it doesn't fall. Um, and make sure you have ready access to power um, and make sure that you can set your interface and your computer close enough so that you can reach them uh, with USB cables um, so that everything can get power and it can be connected. Alright, so I've got my keyboard set up here. This is just a MIDI controller. Um, so this actually gets power from USB, but if you're using um, a stage piano, make sure that you have the power supply for that and you plug that in. Um, and then set it on a stand so that it's sturdy. Make sure you get it to the right height that's comfortable for you. Um, and then make sure you plug in anything that you need. I've got a sustain pedal here. Uh, when you plug that in, make sure that it's plugged directly into a port that says sustain or damper. Um, make sure that it's not hooked up to something that would take an expression pedal. All right. And then, uh, like I said, this thing gets power directly over USB. So you can see that screen is on. If I were to unplug this cable here, it would lose power. And if I plug it back in, it now has power. It's plugged directly into um, the computer. Like I said, if yours has an external power, make sure it's hooked up that way. But also run your USB from your keyboard into your computer. All right, the next thing you want to get set up is your interface. This is the interface that I'm using. Um, it also does not have its own external power supply, but a lot of them do. So this one is co connected directly to the computer, and that's where it's receiving power. And you can see the green USB light on there, just designating that it is receiving power. If yours has an external power supply, make sure you hook that up uh, first before you plug it into the computer. And then you'll notice this computer has two USB ports. Um, so that's hooked up to the interface and also to the keyboard. If you only have two um, plugs as well, but you need to plug in more than that, maybe another MIDI controller or a hard drive, make sure that you plug the really data intensive stuff directly into your computer. So. Uh, a MIDI controller isn't going to use that much data. It can be hooked up through a hub, but something like an interface, you want to be plugged directly into your computer so that you have uh, the quickest data transfer between them and the lowest latency possible. All right, so now that you've got everything connected to the computer, you need to get your audio from your interface and out to the soundboard. Now you'll notice most interfaces are going to have quarter inch outputs, kind of like a guitar would have. Um, but generally soundboards are going to want um, XLR inputs like these direct boxes have right there. Um, so what a direct box does is it's going to convert your signal from that quarter inch um, into an XLR so that it can plug into a snake or into a soundboard. Um, and you'll notice there's a, a designated input on um, these direct boxes. So from the designated output of your interface, main outs one and two, however that's specified, you want to plug them directly into your direct box. So I'm going to take number one here and plug it into the left channel, which is output number one, and then the bottom one here and plug it into the right, which is output number two. And then these XLRs, using XLR cable, will go directly to the snake or to the soundboard. Alright, so now I've got everything connected to the computer, my keyboard and uh, my audio interface. And the interface is hooked up to direct boxes with those XLR cables going to the soundboard. Now it's time for me to open all my software. 
In another video that I made, I talk about opening the software that controls the interface first. Now, if you're using a Focusrite Scarlet or a Motu Ultralight, you'll want to make sure you open up the software that controls that to determine where your outputs are going. Um, but if you're using something like I am, this Complete Audio 6, it doesn't have its own uh, software. It just has outputs that are recognized by the computer. So I can jump directly into opening my software. I'm going to be using Main Stage and Contact. So I'm going to open Contact first and just let it run behind Main Stage. And you can check my other keys setup video um, for instructions on how to set all that stuff up. For a quick setup, I'm just going to have this um, open and I'm going to have the MIDI coming from Main Stage into Contact. So I'm going to open up Main Stage. And when Main Stage opens up, I'm going to open up a recent concert. So I'm just going to open up last week's concert. Alright, great. So I've got this concert open, um, but now I have to assign my physical keyboard to control this keyboard and all my knobs and buttons to control these physical parameters. So the first thing I want to do is go to this Layout tab. And inside of Layout, I can select the software representations of physical controllers, and then I can assign my controller to these keyboards. Um, so I'm primarily going to work with my keyboard, my mod wheel, sustain pedal, and a volume knob. So I click on my keyboard and I hit this assign button. After I hit this assign button, this turns red, showing me that it's waiting for MIDI input. So I'm just going to touch my keyboard. And when I touch it, it sees impulse. And now I can just make my rounds, setting everything up. So I'll select the mod wheel and move the mod wheel. Select the sustain pedal and touch the sustain pedal. And then I'm going to go to my master output, move one of my faders. And for good measure, I'll just set up my up and down patch buttons. All right. Looks like everything's done. So now I'll just uncheck assign and head over to my edit page. And now when I press the keyboard, looks like I've got sound coming out. Um, and I can see the meters moving, but I can't hear anything. So I need to set up my output. If you press command comma, it'll open up your preferences. Additionally, you can go to main stage preferences. It'll open up this window here. And then you go to the audio tab and you'll see that you can select an audio output. Now naturally your output's probably going to be set to built-in output and those are your speakers. So if I set it to the built-in output and I play, you should be able to hear it coming through the computer's speakers. And that's all well and good but I specifically want it to go through my interface. Like I said, I'm using the Native Instruments Complete Audio 6. So when I select from this drop down menu on my audio output, I can select Complete Audio 6 and then hit Apply Changes. And then it'll switch everything over to using that output. Now when I play, um, you won't hear the sound because it's not connected, but you can see the light on the Complete Audio 6 reacting and showing you that I'm playing. So now that that's working inside a main stage, I want to do the same thing in contact. I'm using an external instrument and sending MIDI to contact so that I can use Alicia's keys without taxing my CPU too much. So I'm going to go into contact and I'm going to do the same thing. Preferences. And in my audio here, you can see it asks for a device. 
Again, most of the time it's going to be set to your built-in. But I want to set it to use my complete audio 6. And again, you should see the light moving on the complete audio 6, showing you that it's getting sound out. Alright, so if all of those parameters are set correctly, you'll have audio going out to the soundboard and you should be good to go. Hit the perform button to give you a more usable screen and then you can use the up and down buttons on your keyboard, your computer keyboard, to move through the patches as you play. I've also assigned these up and down buttons to MIDI controls to bank through them as well. That's it. Have fun.